Hey guys, welcome back. Today you will learn how to make a triple boot on your computer. I will be using Windows 11, Mac OS Sequoia, and Zorin OS Linux. In this demonstration, I will be using Dell Optiplex 3080 Micro with Core i5, 10th generation with 8 GB RAM. These three operating systems will be installed in a single SSD drive. I have 256 gigabytes on this SSD. I will partition each OS close to 80 gigabytes with a respective EFI partition. Doing this way will lessen the chances of messing up with your bootloader. Windows is notorious on messing the other EFI. You need at least 32 gigabytes of USB flash drive, USB 3 or C for faster transfer rate. A computer with Windows 7, 10, or 11. You will flash Ventoy into your USB and transfer all these files into that USB afterwards. You can download these files on my website. Link on the description box. You need an ISO file of Windows 10 or 11. You can download them at Microsoft's website. For now, I will be using the Ghost Spectre modified Windows 11 version. As for Linux, download the core version at Zorin OS website. Watch this video first on how to flash Ventoy on your USB, then transfer all the required files on the USB. By now, your USB should contain these files. By the way, in the description box of this video, I will provide some timestamps and useful links in case you need a reference and some fixes. Check them out later. Put the USB flash drive into your target computer and go into the BIOS after turning on. For me, I will press F2 while it's booting. I will restore the BIOS settings to its default configuration. Your BIOS settings may be different. You will need to look for it. I will set the secure boot to disable, then make the USB flash drive as the first boot. This Optiplex's BIOS settings can be accessed using the mouse pointer. Your may be different than mine. Once done, apply the changes and exit. It will now reboot into the USB flash drive. Then Toy Screen will show up. Using the down button on your keyboard, select the Windows 11 ISO, then press Enter twice. This will now load the installer. Proceed with the on-screen instruction. If you're using the official Windows installer, it may be slightly different from this video, but the process is similar on this one. On this part, I will choose the Super Light Edition without the Windows Defender antivirus. Click the custom install. Click and delete all partition on the SSD. Make sure you did a backup already prior doing this part. This will be a fresh or clean install of Windows. Click Next and it will do the formatting. It will proceed to install it on your SSD. Then it will reboot. You can remove the USB flash drive. It will continue to set up the new Windows 11. Wait for it to finish everything. Once you're in the desktop, go to Settings and make a system update. This will take some time for it will download all the junk. I mean the necessary files for the update. One eternity later. Right, click on the Start button, then Disk Management. Let's shrink the Windows drive. I will allocate 150 gigabytes free space. Multiply the 150 to 1024 for you to know the megabyte equivalent. This will make a unallocated disk space on our SSD. Close it once done. Double click the synchronized time. Dual booting dot registry. Click yes and OK when prompted. This will sync the date and time both on the Hackintosh and Windows. Let's reboot. Insert the USB flash drive. I will press F12 for the boot menu option of the BIOS. Selecting the USB flash drive to boot into Ventoy. Select the Windows 10 portable and wait for it to load. Copy the EFI folder to the desktop from your USB flash drive. Extract that file afterwards. Then install R drive image program. Close it once done, then extract the EFI. Open Disk Genius on the taskbar. We will create a EFI partition. Right-click on the free space above, then create a new partition. File system will be set to EFI system partition. The size will be 300 megabytes. Volume name will be OC. 
Then click the Save All button at the upper left. Double-click the OC partition, and we will now copy the EFI folder that we extracted a while ago. Make sure that the folder structure is like this. Inside the EFI has OC and boot folders. Drag the EFI folder inside the Disk Genius. Go to Tools, then set UEFI BIOS boot entries. Click the Add button and navigate the OpenCore.EFI on the OC partition. Rename the boot entry name into OpenCore, then save the current boot entry. On the left, click the Up button four times. It will make the OpenCore bootloader at the top. Then save the current boot entry. Close Disk Genius for we are done with it. Open our drive image that is on your desktop. Click the Restore button and navigate to the RDR file. I will select the Sequoia version. Click the source above, then click the unallocated space below. Click Next, then Start button afterwards. This will now restore the Sequioa on my SSD. Have a coffee while it's restoring. Close the program and let's reboot. Select the Sequioa SSD, then press Enter. If you have a working EFI that supports Mac OS Sequoia, the setup will proceed. You should boot flawlessly until to the desktop. If you are stuck and unable to boot, just go back to Windows 10 Portable and change your EFI using Disk Genius. Let's open Disk Utility. We will make some partition for Linux. Click the Show All device, select the Sequoia disk on the left, then click the Partition button above. Click the Free Space, then click the Minus button, then click the Plus button. To add partition. For the format, set it to MS-DOS, then name it as Linux SSD. You can also drag this little circle for how many gigabyte you want to allocate. Click Apply once done. Click Partition and Continue button once prompted. You will need to configure your EFI folder for your Hackintosh. Go to this video and follow through it so that you can enable booting on Linux. Watch the video first and go back here afterwards. A few inches later. Restart the computer and let's boot again on the Ventoy. I will press F12 for the Boot Menu option of the BIOS, selecting the USB flash drive to boot into Ventoy. This time select the Linux ISO. Wait for it to load. Click the Install Zorin OS button. Select your keyboard layout. Click Continue twice. Click the Something Else option. Then Continue. Now pay attention to Slash Dev slash sda this is our main ssd where we installed windows and mac os if you have multiple drive make sure that doing this on the target ssd drive the sda 1 2 and 3 is for the windows sda 4 and 5 is for mac os sda 6 was the allocated space for linux that we did a while ago while the sda 6 is selected Click the minus button to delete it. Scroll back down and select the free space of that SDA drive. Click the plus button. Make a 300 megabytes in size. Use as EFI, System Partition. Click OK. Select the free space again, then click the plus button. Make a 4094 megabytes in size. Use as Swap File. Click OK. Swap file is like a virtual RAM. If you computer need more RAM, it will take those needed RAM from your swap file. Below is the table you can allocate as you wish. Select the free space again, then click the plus button. Leave the remaining size. Use as EXT4. Mount point, set it to forward slash. Click OK. Now, if you're paying attention, here is the breakdown of the partition that we made so far. Each OS has its own EFI partition. 
Nice and clean. We will now set the EFI partition for Linux. On the drop-down, select the SDA6. Click Install Now. Click Continue when prompted. Select your region. Put the necessary details on this part. Click Continue and it will now install the system. It will take some time. 20 minutes later. Afterwards, it will ask to reboot. I will need to boot into the BIOS settings by pressing F2. The boot order now is Linux on the first. We will need to make the OpenCore bootloader as the first one so that I can chain load both Linux and Windows all together. I will go to the boot sequence option and push OpenCore at the top, applying the settings and reboot. When everything went all right, you will be greeted with this boot screen. Now let's try to boot on each OS, starting on Windows, then Linux, and the last would be on Mac OS Sequoia. And we landed on Windows 11. Let's reboot into Linux this time. I will not bore you enough, so I will fast forward the recordings from here. Just to show that it works on my part. It booted just fine on Linux. Now let's jump into Mac OS right away. Here we are at Sequoia, booted into it successfully. I would like to address this comment from Fat Dream on how to revert everything to Windows. Actually, it is quite simple. You can do this in two ways. You just need to boot into Windows, either on the Ventoy flash drive or the installed Windows on your computer. You will use Disk Genius to delete both the partition of Mac OS and Linux. Open up Disk Genius while your SSD is selected. Here are the various partition inside it. The ESP0, MSR, and Local Disk C is your Windows partition, while the other ones are from Mac OS and Linux. Just delete those directly. Right, click on it. Then delete current partition or press delete on your keyboard. Confirm it when prompted for a confirmation. Click yes. Do this to the rest of the other partition while leaving the Windows related partition. Click the save all button on the upper left once everything is done. You will now have a unallocated disk space. You can right click on the start button and select disk management. Right click on the drive C then click Extend Volume. Click Next twice, then Finish. Need help with your Hackintosh? Provide these details. To get the most effective assistance with your Hackintosh issue, please provide as much information as possible about the following. The more detailed information you provide, the better equipped I'll be to help you diagnose and resolve the issue. Please note, while I can provide guidance and troubleshooting steps, I cannot guarantee a solution for every problem. Hackintoshing can be complex, and some issues may require advanced knowledge or specific hardware combinations. Let's work together to get your Hackintosh running smoothly. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Just tap the video on your screen that may interest you.